Good afternoon, and welcome to my Friday message. We have a lot of great news to celebrate this week, but first a brief update on the latest COVID news. Cases and hospitalizations continue to fall in most states as well as locally, with more counties now at the CDC low level. That being said, deaths have flattened out with an uptick in hospitalization in some areas of the Northeast, so we're keeping an eye on that. Test positivity in our area still is higher than we'd like, although with, within Duke Health, it is now at 5% with 68 patients in the hospital with COVID. There has been a change in the variant mix recently with a decrease in Omicron BA5 and a week-to-week -week uptick in a related variants BQ1 and BQ1.1. According to the CDC, they now account for more than 11% of all cases nationwide, roughly twice what they were last week. And while vaccines and Paxlovid still appear to work against them, monoclonal antibody therapies do not, which poses an increased risk for those who are immunocompromised. All the more reason to complete your recommended vaccination schedules, which includes the new bivalent booster for all those five and older. Do it for yourself and do it for all those who are invulnerable in our community. And while you're at it, don't forget to get your flu vaccine, which is due by November 15th. Now for some good news. We have a wealth of big wins to share, so I'll cover the basics, but tell you where you can find more details. In grant news, the Human Vaccine Institute and the Department of Surgery received a grant from NIAID for HIV vaccine research that could total as much as $26 million over the next five years. And five interdisciplinary teams have received internal grants for research in support of the Duke Climate Commitment. Medicine has a very significant role to play in addressing climate change and its impact on health, and we'll be highlighting each of these projects over the next several months. It's also of note that research related to climate change is a priority of many of our funding agencies, including NIH, so stay tuned as we have a lot to offer. Two researchers from the School of Medicine and one from the Department of Biology on campus have just been named recipients of the 2022 Science Diversity Leadership Awards from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. And several representatives from the Duke Cancer Institute joined the founders of the I'm Not Done Yet Foundation to ring the opening bell at NASDAQ. This foundation was started by the parents of a Duke student who succumbed to cancer at 19, and it's now doing incredible work to support young adult cancer patients and survivors, both here at Duke as well as across the country. You can find more on those stories on the, our School of Medicine news site, as well as on Duke Today. Some other big news is that we have a new member in the U.S. National Academy of Medicine. Election to the Academy is one of the highest honors in the fields of health and medicine and recognizes outstanding professional achievement and commitment to service. And I had the pleasure of discussing this achievement with our newest member, Dr. Nicole Kalakis, who joins 51 other Duke faculty who have been elected to the Academy. Hi, Nicole. It's so great to see you. Um, first of all, my warmest congratulations. It's such an amazing accomplishment to be recognized by the National Academy of Medicine. So congratulations. And I'd like to start by having you just describe the body of work that the Academy recognized. Thanks, Mary. This is this is really fun and to be part of, of Duke and receiving this honor. Uh, so, you know, the central interest of my lab is a fascination with how does the brain learn from experience? A major way that happens in the brain is the connections between the neurons get tuned up and down, how effectively they communicate to each other. And so that's the process we study, which is synaptic plasticity. And we focus our understanding of how it works uh, for learning in a circuitry called the basal ganglia, mm -hmm. which broadly regulates movement. It's important in learning new skills, forming habits. And this brain region is also the site of dysfunction in a range of diseases from Parkinson's to OCD to repetitive behaviors and autism. I think we're recognized for probably two main contributions. The first is that we've been innovators in the field and have introduced new molecular genetic tools that have helped basal ganglia research. And that one's kind of interesting because it wasn't that intentional. That's really a product of the environment I found myself in when I came to Duke. And it's been serendipitous interactions with strong core facilities, um, creating these opportunities to make new things. So these have come from the transgenic core facility, viral vector, high throughput screening. Um, and so we're known for some of our tools. 
The second one is that we discovered a causal mechanism for a movement disorder known as dystonia. Mm -hmm. um, and this was important because for dystonia, we have a handful of genes, but any given gene, you don't really know how it's involved in causing the disease. Um, and the mechanism we found showed the cause not just for one inherited form, but was shared between multiple Mendelian inherited forms and also a subset of the most common sporadic cause of the disease. Uh, and it involved a biochemical pathway involved in protein synthesis that does um, response to cell stress. It's a proteostasis pathway. And this has been really exciting because now there's a very large unmet need in the field. And now we have the opportunity to do mechanism focused uh, therapeutics. And that work is progressing along as well. Well, it was certainly well deserved, but I'm sure it was not exactly expected. So you've had a little time to think about what does it mean to you and to your team getting this honor? I'm really glad you asked that question in that way because it was interesting when I found out the biggest joy for me at that moment was the opportunity it presented to recognize each individual that's been part of my lab over time. Um, that really rose to the top. We had a big old party earlier in the week um, where I really could celebrate all each of their contributions because an honor like this really is a body of work that a group of people have come together to create. Um, and I've worked with really tenacious and inspiring people. I think for me personally, um, I'm really glad to be part of this community and it's also an opportunity to influence policy and decision, which I'm very passionate about. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, I know the first thing you did is get your team together. So obviously it is recognizing a team that comes together and does just amazing work. So when you're thinking of the next couple of years, what excites you most about your work? Uh, that's a hard question. I am excited about all the projects. Um, and it's interesting because I view myself as a basic scientist. And a lot of our work is really trying to create new foundational knowledge about how the brain works. And I think that's really important. Um, uh, so probably, you know, the most exciting is the most novel space I'm in, which is our work in dystonia is really advanced with clinical therapeutic opportunities about as far as it can go in the preclinical models. And there's one drug that kind of intersects your interests. It's an HIV protease inhibitor, uh, ritonavir for mm -hmm. dystonia. Um, so we're really looking at how to go to that next step in humans. And that's a really new space for me. So it's been fun. Right. I love this job. Always something new. Well, that is exciting. I think all of our work, the crown and glory is if you actually can develop a new therapeutic or a new understanding of a disease. So congratulations again. It was so, so exciting to me to see such an important body of work, but most importantly, such a wonderful faculty member recognized. So congratulations, Nicole, and to your team. Thanks. Thanks for the time to talk. It's been really fun. Thank you, Mary. Nicole and I spoke about the power of teamwork which is central to how we achieve great things at Duke. We showed this again this week when we partnered with the National Human Genome Research Institute to host their Centers of Excellence in Genomic Science here at Duke for the first time. But we weren't just the host, we are one of those Centers of Excellence. Our Center for Combinatorial Gene Regulation is the very definition of team science with experts from genomics, computer science, engineering, arts and sciences, and more. Thank you to Dr. Tim Reddy and the entire genomics team for all that you do. Even among us, such a distinguished group, you truly are outstanding. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. Thanks for all that you do and have a great weekend.